Hello, my beautiful, darling Cancer babies. I hope everybody is safe, happy, healthy, and doing well. For those of you new to the channel, this is a Cancerian only channel. Cross watchers are welcome. If you would like to view other sign placements, you could visit my main channel, Tarot of Light. I also have a Virgo and Leo only channel. Please be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. I do a monthly giveaway. I give away tarot cards, oracle cards, and crystals. Um, the winners are announced on the community page. So just hashtag what you would like to win in the comment section, not in the chat. Okay, because if you put it in the chat, I won't see it. If you don't mind winning any one of those things, you could hashtag the word all, okay? Um, my tarot tutorial, um, I had it 50% for Cancer Baby season, but I'm considering leaving it until the end of Virgo season because I do have a Leo and Virgo only channel also. Um, not to mention my Venus and rising is in Leo. So I'm considering that. So as of right now, it's still 50% off if you're looking to start a YouTube channel. <coughs> <laughs> or learn how to read tarot, okay? All right, my loves. Oh, and my new oracle and tarot deck are on my website if you're interested in checking it out. So guys, um, this is a new series that I started on the channel called Coffee and Cancer. I got my coffee, you got your coffee. It's early in the morning. Um, so this is a little bit different. It's not your regular, you know, love tarot reading. So this is gonna be focusing on you bettering yourself so that when you know, your blessings do come in when you do find the love of your life, when you do get that good job, when blessings do come your way, you can hold on to them and you don't self-sabotage. So in this reading, we're going to be focusing a lot on shadow work, okay? Um, we're going to be doing a mantra for protection, calling your power back. We're going to be doing a seven chakra manifestation. Um, and then after that, we're going to get into what's blocking your love life, what's blocking you spiritually. And I have an oracle deck coming in for finances, what's blocking your finances, okay? And then we're going to do all 12 signs on how you should be dealing with that sign on a higher ascended plane like what do you need to do to better the situation with that zodiac sign and don't forget it is sun moon rising venus okay so let's get popping um i saw a few comments where someone was like i grabbed a journal and i'm dedicating it just to this so i know what to work on so that could be a recommendation i'm going to be doing these hopefully monday through friday so if you want to grab a journal so that you could write down what you need to work on okay that works too okay <coughs> <coughs> excuse me cancer all right let's get pop in here so i'm going to say this mantra and this prayer i'm going to set the intention for everyone that is watching i was asked if i can post this so i'm going to be posting it on my website i'll try to get that done um by this weekend okay um so that you guys have it available to you at any time okay so i will post it on the on my website all right, so we have here, I call on powers far and near to banish what's not welcome here. Evil I disarm, I banish all that would cause harm. This I ask, this prayer I say, send unwanted things away. I call my power back to me. I call my energy back to me. I call love back to me. I call money back to me. I call good health back to me. I call protection back to me. I am cleansed and disconnected from anything that may drain me and shielded from all that does not serve me. These words I have spoken and so it shall be. You can say so mode it be. You can say amen, whichever you're comfortable with, okay? Now let's go ahead and do our seven chakra manifestation, okay? <coughs> I know is for the seventh chakra, your crown chakra. I see for your third eye. I speak for your throat chakra. I love with the heart chakra. I do with your solar plexus. Um, I, I feel with the um, sacral, okay? And I am with your root chakra, okay? So we have, I know I am worthy to receive love and all blessings the divine brings to me. I see myself at peace. I see myself loved, financially stable, and operating from my highest self. I speak positivity and life into myself. I speak all my manifestations into existence. I love myself. I love my life. I love all those around me. Whether they hurt me or love me, I wish love on all around me. 
and may that love return to me abundantly. I do align myself to receive every blessing and manifestation. I do surrender to the divine and accept what is for me and release what isn't. I feel peaceful. I feel loved. I feel joyful and grateful. I am blessed. I am worthy. I am a being of light. I am healed. I am grateful for all that I have and for all that is to come. So mote it be or amen whichever you know whichever you feel comfortable with okay all right <clears throat> so let's get popping my loves okay so let's start spiritually what you need to start working on spiritually oh i got a nose my nose my nose is itchy okay spiritually spirit what does cancer need to work on spiritually are there any attacks on cancer chakras blocked what does cancer need to know please what does cancer need to know please what does cancer need to know okay so cancer on your next mercury retrograde you need to expect delays problems interruptions with your transportation your car or whatever and communication so spirit is pre-warning you i think our next mercury retrograde is in august prepare for some delays interruptions okay Cancer, there is someone that may be spreading rumors about you, okay? <clears throat> it could be a business rival, Cancer. This is someone that can't stand your grind, your hustle. This is someone that feels that because you do better than them or because you shine brighter than them, uh, this is someone that talks bad behind your back, okay? Okay, we've got causing family and friends to be mean and cold towards you. Okay, so there is someone here quite possibly in your work energy here, or it could even be a friend that knows that, you know, you're doing well financially or you're actually going after your dreams and succeeding and they don't like it. Okay, so what's going to happen here is the evil eye and look, see, we've got competition here, always trying to one up you. Okay. So Cancer, this could be a co-worker or this could be a friend or a family member that does not like the way you shine. They don't like that you're successful. Um, the evil eye that this person is sending into your life is going to cause disruptions between family members and friends in your life. So you want to go ahead. <clears throat> so you want to go ahead and start focusing on rebuking that evil eye. Okay. You want to start just binding any evil that is your way. I don't personally believe in doing return to senders. I would much rather advise you because we're not God. It's not our place to, even if somebody does something bad to us, it's not our place to punish that person, give it back. You know what I'm saying? So <clears throat> I, I personally just don't. I'm not saying that you shouldn't. You do you. I'm not saying it's bad, good, whatever. It's just not something that I do, okay, or that I want to do. Um, I'm not saying that I haven't done it in my life before. You know, we all start a journey one way and then we come to a higher understanding and I don't like doing that. So what I would rather you do here, okay, just my advice, um, take any, you know, just say a prayer or a mantra where any evil eye that comes towards you, I take it, I transmute it into positive healing energy and I return it back to that person so that they may find peace in their life, they may find their own success in their life, and they may find love and devotion for themselves and those around them, okay? So that's what I recommend you do. You can always look it up online, you know, how to protect yourself from evil eye or whatnot. Just use your uh, discernment on who you are listening to, okay? Now let's move into love cancer. What do you need to focus on in the love department? What are your triggers? What do you need to heal for shadow work so that you can have a relationship, uh, both romantic, friend, family, I mean, whatever it is that works for you, but what do you need to heal? Tell me about Cancer, please, Spirit, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. What does Cancer need to heal? Okay. So Cancer, I am putting four cards here because the number four, it, it represents grounding and stability. So I am hoping that whatever I am telling you <clears throat> catches hold and stays with you so you can, you know, 
work on it, okay? And the fifth card is going to be, um, the five represents change, so that's going to be the fifth card is the card that's under the deck, okay? Our first card here, Cancer, is changing them. Trying to change someone never works. Accept them as they are or move on. Me personally, I am guilty of this, okay? You know, I meet people, I like things about them, Okay, I, in my romantic relationships, there's a lot that I like about them, but then there's a lot that I don't like. So because I don't want to go, and, and this is something I'm putting myself, throwing myself under the bus, Cancer, so that you can, you know, accept that this may be an issue that you have too, okay? <clears throat> if I meet a romantic interest, there's a lot about them that I like. And because I don't want to go through the process of losing somebody, okay, because I've lost enough of my life, I try to get them to operate in on a, on a wavelength that fulfills me emotionally, okay? And I want you to turn those tables. Imagine if someone came into your life and said, oh, Cancer, uh, you like doing this? Don't do that. It bothers me. You don't like doing this? Don't. I mean, so there, there's, there's limits. You know, if it's something that it's compromisable, that makes sense. But if you're if you're <clears throat> dating somebody, <clears throat> excuse me, cancer, if you're dating somebody that let's just say has a serious hobby, um, they're a car guy or they're a biker and they're into bikes or they like to golf. Or if you're dating a female that's really into certain hobbies, like, uh, I don't know, art or something like that. And you try to change the f core foundation of who someone is. If you try to take a biker and make it where they, you know, uh, care less about their bike or, or their crew or their MC or whatever, not going to work. If you try to take a car guy and try to make it where he's more focused on the family and not cars, never going to work. Um, if you try to take a woman here that's, you know, devoted to a certain thing. Okay. I don't know, maybe a craft class, yoga, working out at the gym, you know, maybe uh, getting involved in volunteering, what, whatever women are into here, TikToks, uh, doing their makeup. <clears throat> you know, if you're a guy and there's a woman that's really into uh, makeup, doing their looks, you know, it takes three hours before you guys have to go out you can't change people okay like you you know for my men out there you may meet a female and you're really into this person but you don't like the fact that they're always on social media getting attention from people you can't take that away you can't take the core foundation so either you accept someone for who they are because what happens is if you force them to change if they like you enough they may change for a little while but ultimately, how long can somebody pretend? Can, how long can somebody pretend to not be themselves, right? <clears throat> so you need to focus, Cancer, on finding somebody where whatever flaw they may have that doesn't really sit well with you, it doesn't sit well with you. But it's not like a deal breaker type of flaw. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, <clears throat> okay, they do this. I don't like it, but okay, I can compromise. You know, if, if you find that you can kind of compromise with it, do you see what I'm saying? Like, you know, if you end up with someone that just comes home at the end of the day and throws their clothes all over the floor, okay? Is that, you know, it takes five seconds to pick up clothes, even though it annoys you, even though it seems disrespectful, even though it seems like this person doesn't care that you've been working all day or whatever. It's compromisable, okay? Compared to like a man that's always out of the house with their friends or cheating or whatever. Do you understand what I'm saying? Choose your battles, Choose your battles and, and, you know, when you date someone, look at them as a whole, not just at what you like. Look at them as a whole, okay? And ask yourself, is this something I can deal with? Or, you know, how many things are there about this person that I would want to change because it's really like a deal breaker for me? So, you know, letting go is key here. Letting go, you know, you may meet someone that you really like and because you like A, B, and C about them, you just want to hold on to them. And because you want to hold on to them and you don't want to do the work in learning how to let go and understand that's not for you, you're going to pound this person to change. <clears throat> you got to stop doing that, okay? Playing games. You don't need to play games to keep the right one interested in you. So Cancer, <clears throat> there's a lot of things right now. <coughs> My throat chakra, there's something up with it. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, I'm sorry. 
<clears throat> there's um, a lot of things on TikTok right now that are all about how to manipulate men, how to manipulate women, play this game, do this. Uh, you know, you go out on a date, don't talk to them for three days. Don't do it. Don't listen to that shit. Okay, because you could end up meeting a really good man or a really good woman. And because you're listening to all this dumb ass advice, okay, don't don't pay attention to it. <clears throat> don't pay attention to it. If you go out on a date and someone texts you the next morning, you answer them. Okay, you answer that. You don't wait five hours. You don't want to make it look like, oh, I'm too busy or I, I'm too, you know. No, don't play mind games. Okay, <clears throat> someone's interested in you let them be interested. And if they start to become disinterested, you have to learn how to be still and let God do his thing. Okay. Not that because you haven't heard from them, you get dressed out, you go out, you're posting all these crazy pictures and seeking attention to try to keep them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Chasing you. Don't do that. Don't do that. Okay. If, if someone stops texting you, stops calling, don't be posting memes all over the place and everything. No, no. Okay. If someone is disinterested in you, you need to listen and see that for what it is. Because again, that is you trying to change and control and manipulate the situation. I am guilty of this also. Okay. And that is some, these two things are things that I've actually started working on in my life. So that needs to stop. Okay. Um, you know, in a way that is technically gaslighting a situation. Okay. If you're, if you've, you've been talking to someone steady for four days and I don't know where they fall off the face of the earth. And now you're all over Instagram, Facebook, posting memes, posting pictures, going out, being crazy, trying to get this person to, you know, see if they're going to like your stuff or come back around and chase that is gaslighting a situation. And many times it's so easy for us to, you know, accuse others of gaslighting, love bombing, doing all this stuff that we don't realize when we're doing it ourselves. My father, may he rest in peace, used to say, when you're pointing a finger at somebody, you got three pointing back at you. Okay. Tolerating abuse is number three. Any kind of abuse is not okay. You deserve someone who treats you well. So for instance, cancer, if someone has been texting you consistently for four days and has shown a tremendous amount of interest in you, and then they take that away out of nowhere, that is abusive. That is what creates trauma bonds because that is somebody that is trying to get you high on love and then take it away from you so that you end up depressed and forlorn and upset. And then when they come back around, you get really high again. Okay. That's what trauma bonds are. It's basically a drug addiction, but to a person. Okay. So if somebody switches their behavior on, you know, if somebody switches their behavior like that, don't show any emotion whatsoever, because immediately, as soon as you show that you're triggered by that, they know that they're in control. So you have to learn that. Okay. Well, I guess they don't want to text me today. Then they're not for me. They're not for me. As much as it sucks, I'm going to just process that's what men, that what's meant for me can never be taken because I am not trying to get myself into situations where people are trying to play games or I don't want any toxic connections in my life. If you can't, I mean, if you come towards me and you're on this wavelength, if you cannot be consistent on this wavelength, then don't talk to me because I'm looking for consistency and stability. And the, the problem is, especially with cancers is, you know, we never want to let go. You know what I'm saying? Letting go of someone that made us happy and going somewhere else sucks. We don't like that change. Well, you know, emotional change. We're not big on it. You know, you got to learn how to let it go. Okay. And especially if someone starts calling you names, if someone puts their hands on you, stop being so forgiving. You gotta, um, it's only going to get worse. Okay. Once someone crosses a, a boundary and disrespecting you, and if you stay, it is now your fault, cancer. From that point forward, you have no right to complain about your person's abuse. You have no right to go to your friends and talk bad about this person. You have no right to keep yelling at them that they should treat you better because cancer, if you don't follow your own rules, you can't expect anyone else to follow them. If you say, I will never be with a man that cheats on me and then a man goes and cheats on you or for my men out there, if you say, I will never be with a female that does A, B, C, and D and these people go ahead and do it and you stay, they're like, well, well, okay then. Cancer, if you walk into the Walmarts 
and you go in there and you just fill your your cart full of crap and you walk out the front door and nobody bothers you and there's no charges pressed and nothing else, what's going to stop you from doing it again? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay, because people are only going to do what they, you know, what you allow is what you continue cancer. Okay, what you allow is what will continue. So you have to learn how to put up those boundaries. And this all stems from the fear of having to let go. But I really want them to love me. But I, you know, they're so perfect with this, this and that. And if they can just change this about themselves, then I won't have to go through the process of being sad and letting go. You're trying to take the easy way out by changing other people. You're trying to take the easy way out by forgiving when you shouldn't. You're trying to take the easy way out. And let me tell you something, Cancer. Nothing ever positive, nothing ever worth having comes from taking the easy way out. Okay? Only working hard and doing the difficult stuff is what's going to bring you the stuff that sticks for life. Okay? Fourth card, expectations. When you expect too much, no one measure, measures up, ditch your list, want what's real, okay? So Cancer, maybe you guys have been through a lot of traumatic experience both in your childhood and with exes. And now you've created a list of what you want and what you don't want. And it has gotten to the point where it is impossible for anyone to meet those needs, Okay, like I said, you're never going to find someone that's 100% perfect and, and you're never going to find someone that's 100% exactly who you want. Re relationships are about compromise and you know why they're about compromise cancer because you're a human being and your person is also. Okay, and coming into relationships, you have to understand that, that there are two separate human beings in that relationship. It is not all about you. It is not all about your wants and needs. Your wants and needs are important. There are, if you have a list of 20 things that you're looking for in a partner, I'm going to need you to go ahead and I want you to actually do that, Cancer. I want you to take 20 things that you feel are very important in a partner, in a love interest, and write them down. And out of those 20 things, I want you to separate five things that are absolute deal breakers. Absolute deal breakers. And those you're going to put to the side. And the rest of the 15 things are compromisable. Okay? Compromisable. All right? So like, and, and what I mean by that is, I need a man that makes $150,000 a year. And I want a man that is loyal and doesn't cheat. Okay, hear me out. Which one of those two things would be more important? Being loyal and not cheating. That is a deal breaker. Because if your man comes home and makes $75,000 a year and you make $50,000 a year, you guys are at a nice juicy hundred and twenty-five dollars a year. You can work as a team. It's fine. Okay, it's fine. Or cancer, if you make $150,000 a year and they only make 75, guess what? Now you got 225 grand coming in. Relax, it's gonna be all right. Okay, there are some things that are compromisable and there are other things that are absolute deal breakers. Okay, uh, my, my, my girl can't do this. My girl can't do that. You know, I, I'm not a man, so I can't, you know, I can only speak for females really, but you know, men out there, do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? You know, I need a girl that, you know, I don't know what's important to men. You know, I need a girl that's not about, you know, uh, girls night out where, you know, there's different types of girls nights out guys. You know what I'm saying? There's the girls night out where it's a, some girls that get together. Uh, they go to Ruby Tuesdays. They have a few drinks, you know what I'm saying? Laugh, joke, bullshit a little bit in their home by 11. And then you got your girls night out where you're at the club till four o'clock in the morning. So drunk that you're peeing yourself you know, there's a difference. I'm not saying that girls night out isn't healthy, but for men out there, I'm assuming there's a difference with those two things, right? Okay. So my men out there, you know, what is most important to you and what isn't? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? So write down 20 things that are important to you and a partner and remove five that are deal breakers and the other 15 are compromisable. Okay. Now, fifth card here, Cancer, is retreating. Your fear of being hurt has made you retreat. It's time to get out and try again. So Cancer, I feel like many of you have given up on the love game. Just given up. You said, you know what? I'm just going to sit here 
me, I, I, I did this. I got my dino nuggies. I am a dino. I might be the only 42 year old woman in the world that still gets butterflies in their stomach when my dino nuggets are done in the oven. Okay. I don't know. Don't judge me. Okay. You know, I got me, my dino nuggies, my glass of wine. I got my puppies that love me unconditionally. I don't need nobody. Okay. I am done. My dino nuggies don't talk back. My dogs love me. I'm good. I'm not dealing with it again. Okay. So cancer, you know, nobody gets anywhere by giving up on the game completely. Giving up on people, giving up on people, places, things, and situations that are not for your highest good is healthy, okay? Me, for instance, you know, my dad owned businesses when I was little and I'm business oriented. Everything that I do, you know, I'm, I work seven days a week. I'm a hard worker. There's certain things that I've tried in life that I failed. And you know what, Cancer? I do not beat a dead horse. If it's a failure, I'll do it for a week. If I don't see that, you know, if I don't get this, uh, you know, if I don't see improvement, I let it go. I let it go. I let it go. And I have to learn to also do that with people too. Okay. I'm, I'm here. I'm with cancer too, cancer. We're doing this together. We're doing it together, boo. Okay. So these are things that I have to do too, because, you know, I'll meet people and I'll see a shit ton of red flags and, you know, I keep on loving them, keep on investing into them because I feel like if I just give enough and I love enough and I do all these things enough that eventually these, these people will want to not see me hurt or they will change for me so that I'm not living in pain because if I make their life comfortable, why wouldn't they want to make my life comfortable, right? But it's not the way it works, cancer, okay? That's not the way it works. Okay, so that's in love. These are the things that we need to think about today and focus on, okay? Um, I'm going to do career when that tarot, when that oracle deck comes in. It should be in in a few days, okay? So let's go ahead and do cancer and all 12 signs. So cancer, in your all 12 signs reading, <clears throat> this is going to be how to handle this zodiac sign from a higher ascended spiritual so this is not going to be your typical, you know, they're coming back, they're cheating, they're apologizing. This is how you should handle the situation when dealing with this person on a highly ascended plane. What spirit wants you, what spirit is advising you to do, okay? <coughs> spirit, tell me about cancer and all 12 signs. Spiritual, Freya found her squeaky toy. I'm sorry, cancer. For those of you who don't know, I have a five-month-old lab and she's too cute to punish, so here we are. Okay, even not that she has to be punished, but I'm just saying. All right, so let's see here. Spirit, tell me about my beautiful Cancer baby, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, spiritual guidance and advice for Cancer, and all 12 signs. Okay, so if we're dealing with an Aries, we have the Ten of Cups, we have the Three of Pentacles, we've got the Six of Wands, and we have the King of Wands. So Cancer, for those of you that are dealing with an Aries, this is somebody that their genuine intention towards you and this connection is to be a team with you. Um, they do want to build something solid with you. This person does want happily ever after with you. I feel like your problem with this Leo, is, with this, excuse me, with this Aries is that they like attention. This is someone that may have flashy cars. This is someone that drives around with the music blaring. They may have a motorcycle. This is somebody that, you know, maybe it's a female that when they go out, they have to be, you know, dressed to the nine. Like, you know, when this female walks around, everybody's looking, okay? Or it could be that you're dealing with an Aries that <clears throat> spends a lot of money on their hair, their eyelashes, their nails, expensive clothes. It could be a male Aries that, <clears throat> I don't know, it, today with gender, I mean, you know what I'm trying to say, okay? When I say man, woman, you guys understand. I mean, it could be a woman that's a biker that I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? My point is, is that whatever this person's into, they do it to the nine. You know what I'm saying? Uh, they like attention. When this person goes out, they like to be seen. They like flashy things. That may make you feel insecure in some way, shape, or form. Spirit is telling you, don't. 
accept this person for who they are and trust in the fact that they need to be who they are for them to fill their own cup. That's what makes them happy. Are they loyal to you? Yes. Do they want a future with you? Yes. So the more you fight with this person, okay, it may pull them away from you. So if this person does, if this Aries does have uh, a history of cheating or whatever, you know, it could be because you're trying to take who they are away. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you're trying to force them to be someone that they're not, they may buck on you like a horse that's trying to be tamed and go run out and do something to hurt you, to have that power play to show you like, listen, don't boss me around. I'm, I willingly want a, a future with you. I willingly want to work with you, but don't try to change me. You know what I'm saying? I'll be loyal to you if you could accept me. And that's the way this person is, is coming at you. So Cancer, you know, spiritually, my advice to you here is, like I said, what is compromisable and what is, uh, you know what I'm saying, and what is a deal breaker. And I feel like when it comes down to your five deal breaker things that you choose, this person will check off all of those things because they're giving you all 10 of their cups. And with that three of pentacles, they're working with you, okay? Okay, um, this person just might be an attention seeker. That's it. You know, they like attention. It is what it is. Okay, if we're dealing with a Taurus, we've got the Hierophant, we have the Page of Swords, we have the Four of Cups, and we have the Knight of Swords. Cancer, <clears throat> if you're dealing with a Taurus, I feel like you're moving too fast. I feel like you want this Taurus to act like they're married already. I feel like you want this Taurus to propose. Some of you are pushing for commitment from this person. And let me explain to you, they are a Taurus. So if you haven't Googled it yet, not you, God, Jesus, all the gods known to mankind are ever going to budge a Taurus. Okay, it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Okay, so, you know, Cancer, I feel like this Taurus is committed to you and they do see that for the long term but you wanting this person you know with the page of swords little questions like so when are we moving in or do you want marriage or do you want kids or what do you want or you know knight of swords you keep pushing this person attacking this that you're not allowing the taurus to just come to you naturally when they're ready and commit to you and that's why with the four of cups energy you're going to keep getting your feelings hurt because this taurus is not going to budge because you're attacking them or saying mean things to them or uh you know what I'm kind of hearing is stuff like oh well a real man would do this this and that and if you were a real woman I, first of all I hate that oh my lord Jesus cancer please do not ever talk to anybody like that when I hear those words my soul just cringes okay do not please if you were a real man or a real woman no do not do that okay Listen, you have to let people do things in the time frame that they are comfortable doing them. And you will come to find that if you just let this Taurus be and let them commit to you in their own way when they're ready and do that marriage proposal when they're ready, do you understand what I'm saying? It'll be so much sweeter because you'll know that it's not something that you had to beg for. It's not something that you had to chase. It's not something that you had to plead for. Uh, they're just doing this from their own accord, their own heart and because they want to and it'll be so much sweeter okay all right if we're dealing with a gemini we've got the two of swords we've got the world card we have the seven of swords and we've got the page of wands okay so cancer here's the deal with the gemini here's the deal with the gemini you have questions Okay, you have a question that you want to ask this Gemini. Your intuition is telling you that the Gemini is hiding things from you, keeping secrets. Maybe they're very serious about passwords on their phone or there's, you know, you, they don't tell you where they are or whatever the case may be. So here's the thing, Cancer. What did we just discuss? What did we just discuss? With the world card, have you learned your lesson here? Or are you going to keep nagging, fighting, chasing, begging, pushing someone to keep loving you and doing the right thing by you? And you know what I'm saying? Or with the world card, are you going to say, you know, page of wands, listen, we need to talk. I feel like you are hiding something from me. I feel like you're cheating on me or something is happening behind my back. Can you clarify this for me? 
And I feel like the Gemini is going to say no with the two of swords. And with the world card, what are you going to do, Cancer? Are you going to keep fighting and running around in the middle of the night trying to get in their phone, putting GPS on their car, uh, doing loyalty tests, having your friend hit them up on social media? Are you going to keep chasing this and making yourself crazy? Or are you going to say, listen, I'm not interested in living a life where I have to wake up and go to sleep wondering whether you care about me or not, whether you love me or not. I want to be at peace and know that everything is okay in my relationship. Obviously, you cannot provide that to me. So therefore, you can go your own way. And that's how you're going to handle that in a spiritually ascended matter. And what that Gemini is going to get out of that conversation is that you are not lowering your self-esteem, your self-respect, or your boundaries to go chase after them to get them to respect you. Either they are going to, if they value your place in that Gemini's life, the Gemini is going to understand that you want a relationship where there's open open, honest communication, no sneakiness, no trifling ass energy, that you just want peace in your relationship. So the Gemini now will have a choice. Either they can come towards you and open up to you, or they can come towards you and be your peace, not your war. Or, you know, Cancer, if the Gemini's like, I'm not willing to do that, you know, I'm not willing to give up my single life, Cancer has to accept me as is, you guys go your separate ways. But this is one of those situations where, again, you can't change people. If you are communicating to your partner that something is making you feel uneasy and this, your partner does not say, well, I don't want you to feel that way. I don't want you to feel like I'm doing something wrong behind your back. I love you. So what is it that I'm doing that's making you feel uncertain or unsafe or fearful? What what action am I doing that's making you feel that way so I can clarify things for you? I don't feel that this Gemini is going to respond that way. So Cancer, your answer is, if you don't care about my feelings and my peace, I got to go. And that's it. End of discussion. It's just that simple. If you're dealing with another Cancer, Four of Pentacles, the Ten of Pentacles, the Nine of Pentacles, and the Page of Pentacles. <sighs> okay, so Cancer, if you're dealing with another Cancer here, okay, um, there is somebody that wants to come towards you in Page of Pentacles energy, okay? Uh, this could be a child of yours, Cancer. It could be a friend. It could be somebody younger than you. It could be a love interest that's younger than you. It could be somebody that is a lot uh, less mature than you. Um, it could be someone that has a lot less money than you. Okay. So cancer, what you have here is somebody that wants to hold on to your energy. This is going to be for my cancers dealing with another cancer. And one of you has a lot of money. Okay. Nine of pentacles, 10 of pentacles. I don't care what anyone says. One person here is very well established financially. And I feel like what we have with this page of pentacles and this four of pentacles is someone that wants to hold on to you and your energy for the benefit of being in your life for financial prosperity. Okay. This is why this person wants to hold on to you. So cancer, I have to be honest here. If we look at your list of 20 things that I told you to write about a person that you want to be with, I feel like a page compared to a nine of pentacles energy that this person is lucky if they check off one thing on your list. You're dealing with a man child or you're dealing with a, a spoiled female here. Uh, this is, if you're dealing with another cancer here, this is someone that only wants to be in your energy to drain you with that four of pentacles energy. This is somebody greedy. This is somebody selfish. This is somebody you'll feel the pull on your energy because this is someone that has a lot less than you. Okay, so Cancer, with that Nine of Pentacles and that Ten of Pentacles energy, this is you needing to understand because you have to understand here, Cancer. Lumen Moon Tarot puts it the best, okay? When you're sitting in Nine of Pentacles energy, you've reached all your goals as a single person. You've been, you know, the Queen of Cups, the Queen of Swords, the Queen of Wands, the Queen of Pentacles. You've ascended. You've learned your life lessons. All you're waiting for is that one pentacle, okay, which is love to bring it to a 10 of pentacles energy, which is happily ever after sharing your abundance with somebody long term for the rest of your life. Now you're looking at this person cancer like, oh, but they have a pentacle. 
They could be my 10th pentacle. I could make this work. No, no, that is not the right pentacle. It is not the right pen. That is a tiny little pentacle coming from a tiny little person. Okay. This is, this is a, a child. I don't care if they're 50 years old. It is a child. Okay. This is somebody that is going to end up taking from your life. Okay. The, all they're going to do is end up sucking like a vacuum, like a vacuum, like a vacuum, like a vacuum. Do you understand? Um, you know, if you're sitting in nine of pentacles energy, that list of 20 things that I gave you and those five things that you put to the side, we're looking at a minimum of a king of pentacles energy is what you should be with. Realistically, you should be with an emperor, someone older, mature, makes good money, has their life together, understands life lessons so that intellectually, spiritually, mentally, you guys are on the same page, okay? If you end up accepting this offer from the cancer that you're dealing with, cancer, it's just going to drain you, okay? And I feel like cancer, you know, the problem with the nine of pentacles is the nine of pentacles sometimes gets lonely. So they're willing to compromise with, I can make this one little pentacle work, even though, even though what's attached to it is someone that's going to do nothing but disrupt my peace. You know, all you're doing is running around your house screaming like you're a mother and they're a child. That's it. That's all that's going to happen here. Okay. This is, uh, you know, this is like sugar mama, sugar daddy type vibes, but it's somebody that, you know, doesn't want to leave you alone because they want to drain your peace, your prosperity and everything else. So cancer, you know, this is you needing to come into an energy of understanding your worth. Okay. I'm seeing here that you're grown, you're financially stable, you're independent, and this is you selling yourself short. This is a Ferrari dealership a Maserati dealership watching someone walk in, watching a 20-year-old kid walk in that works at Wendy's and saying, eh, screw it. I, we haven't had anyone come in in a while to buy a car. Let's just give this one a chance. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that doesn't happen. You know what I'm saying? A Ferrari never sells itself short. Even if someone hasn't come into that dealership for six months, if you walk into that dealership, the Ferrari is still going to be what the Ferrari is going to be. No discounts, no holds bar. No, bro. This is a fucking Ferrari. Now I'm not giving you a 50% discount because we haven't had a sale in six months. I don't think so. And cancer, I feel like if you're dealing with another cancer, you're selling yourself short and you're sitting at tables with people that are going to drain you because they are so far beneath you. Okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. You need to set your boundaries and be realistic when dealing with people. Okay. If we're dealing with a Leo, Seven of Cups, the Nine of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Fool. So Cancer, if you are dealing with a Leo here, um, you have it in your head. I'm sorry, guys. I need to pull one more card on this. Uh, yeah, I was going to go one way with that, but then something stopped me. It wasn't correct. Okay. Okay. Leo, I, uh, Cancer, I feel like a Leo is coming towards you. This is a divine soulmate. Okay, this is a divine soulmate. Um, this person that is coming towards you is going to require you taking a leap of faith and trusting in the divine. Okay, whether it's a new Leo or whether it is somebody from your past. I don't know. Okay, the thing here is, Cancer, you with the Seven of Cups and the Nine of Wands are you create fantasies. You worry about things before they even happen. And let me tell you what I mean by that. You meet a new Leo. They have checked off five boxes, those five boxes of everything that you're looking for. They're checking it off and 10 of your 15 a compromise boxes. Okay. It, this person's a gift from God. It would just require for you to have faith and put your heart on your sleeve. But here's what you're doing with the seven of cups and the nine of wands. Oh my gosh. This is too good to be true. I'm sure that this person has hoes up to the wazoo. I'm sure that this person could have whoever they want. This person's just going to end up cheating on me. I'm going to end up falling in love with this person and getting freaking destroyed because they're so perfect. And I know I'm going to fall so deep in love that when they screw me over, it's going to be like ridiculous getting over this person. 
Do you understand? You're, you're creating fantasies and scenarios in your head of how it's going to end and how bad it's going to be if you trust and how bad it'll be if you let your guard down. It's just going to be so bad if I put my heart on my sleeve and let this person in, it's going to be ridiculous. Meanwhile, Cancer, if you learn to just live in the moment, if you have someone that is treating you right today, give them the opportunity to treat you right. If tomorrow they treat you wrong, then you handle that situation accordingly okay but what you're trying to do is play God here okay you can't play God you can't do that okay you need to just learn to live in the present moment because if you enjoy the the laughter and the the love and and whatever this Leo is bringing into your life and live in the moment that Leo will fall in love with you love laughter bonding joking this is what creates an attachment in people Okay, so if you just operate from an energy of light and love and understanding that, you know, yeah, tomorrow if this person mistreats you, it would suck that they have to leave your life, but at least you have those beautiful memories with this person. You got to enjoy their presence. You have to start looking at everybody, Cancer, like they're just dropping by to say hi. Okay, that's it. And whoever stays, stays. And whoever leaves, well, it was a fun experience. I got to go over here and I got to go to this restaurant and I got to see this and it was a new adventure and you know whatever okay so cancer you need to learn how to be a little bit more carefree and stop putting these scenarios in your head and playing god you don't know what tomorrow holds with this person if you live in the moment enjoy the moment i have i feel like this is something that could be long term okay this is a divine soulmate coming towards you whether it's a new person or an old person i don't know if we're dealing with a Virgo, we've got the King of Cups, we've got the Hermit, we've got the Queen of Wands, and we have the Nine of Swords. Cancer, if you're dealing with a Virgo, Virgos like to, uh, they need time. They need space to recharge. They need space to analyze their life. Uh, a Virgo's mind is a place that not even Einstein could figure that out and organize it. Okay. Um, think of the show hoarders. Okay. Think of the show hoarders. Imagine that in a Virgo's head with nothing but thoughts. Virgos have, they are processing 30,000 thoughts at a time. Every decision that they make takes an eternity to make they need time to process their thoughts and their emotions okay it is just every virgo that you will ever meet that is the way it is okay there is a virgo here that loves you they love you cancer they're loyal to you they want to be with you but the king of cups in the divine masculine energy is someone that has so much control over their emotions they could appear that they don't care they could appear cold and cancer with the queen of wands and the nine of swords you're in an energy of feeling like this person's not attracted to you this person's not giving you you want attention from this virgo constant attention you know you you need this virgo to give you love you need this virgo to give you attention you need this Virgo to make you feel special and put you on a pedestal. You know, if, if, if this Virgo, if you go to bed with this Virgo every night and this Virgo reaches for you every night and wants to have sex. And then that one night comes where this Virgo could have potential. And another thing about Virgos is they're quiet. So this person may have come home from work, not told you that something happened in the workplace earlier that day. And they just need some time to sit down on the couch and process what happened and figure out what decision they need to make. And because they didn't come to bed and reach for you and have sex, now all of a sudden you're in a state of massive distress with the Nine of Swords energy where you're thinking that they're cheating and they don't love you anymore and they're not attracted to you anymore. And why is he doing this? And why is she Virgos need time so again this goes back to understanding that you are a human being and they are a human being okay and that sometimes people wake up and they have a bad day or they have a difficult decision this is a Virgo that just gets in their feelings every once in a while or they're overwhelmed with thoughts in their head and they need time to just process do that soul searching figure things out analyze if, what they're doing with their life and because this person withdraws themselves from you emotionally um, or sexually maybe you go into a tailspin crying all night long because they forgot to text you good night or they forgot to text you good morning or they didn't send the kissy face emoji when they text you good night why didn't they text the kissy face emoji this is it it's over they're cheating they're with someone else you got to stop Okay, you got to stop. You got to allow people to have their space and then the Virgo will come back to you when they're ready. Okay. All right. 
Moving on to Libra, we've got the King of Swords, we've got the Five of Cups, we've got the Hanged Man, and we have the Lover's Card. Cancer, if you're dealing with a Libra here, um, I feel that uh, your intuition is telling you that something is up with this Libra. OK, you know, something's not right. You may feel that this Libra is married or that they're seeing someone on the side or that they have a drinking addiction or a drug addiction or a gambling addiction or a spending addiction. You know that the, the lover's card is Adam, even the snake and that snake could represent anything. OK, I feel like you're a little bit in King of Swords mode here where you're trying to figure out what is up with this Libra. Here's the thing, Cancer, you need to come into an energy of understanding that you are a very intuitive sign and you need to learn how to trust your in intuition without needing to see physical proof because you're going to see the physical proof. But here's the problem with the hanged man. You have been suffering, sacrificing, trying to dig and find information and going back on this person's Instagram, looking at every single person that commented on their, on their page and then going and looking at that person's profile. The level of investigation that you are doing to try to figure out what's really going on is time that you are never going to get back. Okay. So you're suffering, sacrificing to gain this enlightenment. And with the five of cups, you're just going to end up disappointed. You're going to end up disappointed. Okay. So if you can learn to trust your intuition initially, you will save yourself so much time and trouble. Do you understand? Instead of getting into this mode of, no, I got to see it for myself that, you know, they're cheating or that they have a drug addiction or that some, something, whatever it is, do you understand? So the divine has sent this Libra into your life for you to learn that lesson from this point forward. When you meet someone and you feel like something's off, just let it go. Just let it go because you're going to spend all this time digging, asking, fighting, whatever. And eventually you'll find out. But for some of you, that could be five years down the line. It could be 10 years down the line. Who the hell is going to give you 10 years back? That's 10 years of your life. You're never going to get back. Okay. Okay. Moving on to a Scorpio. Page of Cups, the Ace of Wands, the Six of Pentacles, and the Five of Pentacles. Cancer, if you're dealing with this Scorpio, the problem that you're having here and how you have to deal with this is understanding that there's a pattern here, okay? This is a Scorpio that comes in, they sweet talk you, they have sex with you, um, you either feed them, give them money, pay for something, and then with the Five of Pentacles, you end up broke and you don't know how this happened. That's what I'm getting with the Scorpio. Even if you're married to the Scorpio, living with the Scorpio, you'll find that the only time you get attention from this Scorpio is when you need they need something. You'll find that the only time this Scorpio comes on and lays down their best sex and whatever, and every time they say that you're pretty, what you're handsome, whatever, it's because they need something and then they disappear. So, okay, I could understand you making this mistake one time. I could understand you making it two times. But after the third time, Cancer, now it's like, dude, Cancer, wake up, okay? Understand that, you know, because you want this Scorpio's attention, what you're willing to do, Cancer, is pay for it, okay? You're dealing with a prostitute. That's basically what you, I hate to say it, but you're dealing, even if you're living with this person, you're dealing with a prostitute. Okay. This is somebody that will co come in and, and, you know, I love you, lovey dubby, sweet nothings. They'll lay down the best D you've ever had. They'll lay down the, they'll pop that cooch like nothing you've ever seen in your life because they need you to pay for something because they need you to, and you know, they'll ask after they're done, you know, the, after everything is done and over and Hey baby, do you think you can lend me $50 because my fault? And you know, cancer, you may only have $75 in the bank until you get to Friday. And here you are paying them $50 for their Metro PCS phone bill. And now you're sitting there looking, you know, this person now all of a sudden, they don't care about you. They're not texting. They're not calling. They're not laying down their best sex that you're not important anymore. And now you're stuck broke with $25 in the bank to get to Friday. And they're off somewhere else using that cell phone bill that you just paid for to go speak to other people. Okay. You've made this mistake multiple times. Stop doing it. Understand it for what it is that this person is literally, they come, they, they tell you what you want to hear. They have sex with you and do everything that you want in bed, but they want to get paid. This person wants to get paid. You're dealing with a prostitute. 
okay? You're dealing literally with a prostitute. I, I hate to say that. I know it sounds disgusting and horrible. Y yeah, no, they don't walk on the streets and they're not standing on a corner. I get that. But, you know, that's who you're... It, it, it is an energy. I mean, they will only service you, but at the end, you got to pay. That's a wake-up call. Understand it for what it is, okay? So the way you're going to deal with this spiritually is by not looking at what you want. So which again, this goes back to what we said earlier in the video, Cancer. You like the way they talk to you. You like the way they have sex with you, but you don't like the fact that you have to pay for it afterwards and then they leave and they don't answer you back when you text them. But you're going to hold on to it and try to argue with this person and try to change them and whatever. Through actions, this person is showing exactly what your position is in their life. And what your position is, is someone that all they have to do is be smoochy with you, lay down some good sex, and you will pay a bill or you'll fill up their gas tank. They'll be like, oh, babe, I got to get to work at seven o'clock. I got to get to work. Fuck. I have no gas money. Can you, can you give me 50 bucks for gas? And here you are with $35 in your banking account, putting yourself in the negative by $15 to help them get to work because you just feel so on cloud nine that, you know, cancer, put up boundaries, put up boundaries. That's it. The next time this person comes in and does all of that, say no, no, I don't, I'm not paying for your, for your presence. That's ridiculous. I'm sorry. If you don't have money to get to work, guess what? Then I guess you could stay here for the day and we can chill, play hooky. I don't know what to tell you. You know, okay, you got to learn here, Cancer, to see things for what they really are and not for what you want them to be, okay? Um, if we're dealing with a Sag, if we're dealing with a Sag, we've got the Three of Cups, we have the Queen of Swords, we've got the Knight of Pentacles, and we have the Four of Wands. So Cancer, if you're dealing with a Sag, I feel like you are sitting in an energy of being very strict or untrusting with this person because you may feel very guarded because they maybe like to go out, they've got friends, they like to socialize. So, you know, what's triggering you in this connection is the fact that this person likes to go out and have a good time reality is with the knight of pentacles and the four of wands is that they always come home at night they're very stable they don't veer off the path i feel like this person is dating to marry but you really don't like the fact that this person has a lot of friends that they like to go out and drink they may have friends of the same sex you really don't trust this person cancer again the way you need to handle this is it's not a problem until it's a problem Okay, stop forcing this person to stay in. Stop forcing this person to cut off their friends. Stop forcing this person to do whatever. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have someone here that is loyal and stable and, you know, looking for high levels of commitment cancer. If them going out and being a social person, a social butterfly bothers you, you have to ask yourself, is that something that you're willing to compromise on? Because, you know, you, it's like, this person, you like this part of this person, the Knight of Pentacles and the Four of Wands, but it's this partying, the drinking, the friends, whatever. It's really pissing you off. So stop trying to change them. You know, if you cannot handle being married to or living with someone that likes to go out with their friends or whatever, stop fighting it. Okay. You don't like it. That's it. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you go looking for a car cancer to go purchase a vehicle, normally, you know, you know what you want, you look at what you want, and that's it. You don't look towards the cars where you're like, I don't like the whole exterior of this vehicle. I don't like the interior of this vehicle. But what I do like is that it's good on gas mileage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and purchase it and I'm going to go ahead and spend all that money on changing the outside of the car, the inside of the car, because there's this one thing that I like. What I do like is the little knob that puts it into drive. This one little knob right here, I like that. So I'm, I'm going to buy this whole vehicle and change everything about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, Cancer. You know, they, they do have this this one thing about them that you like, but you're, you're trying to force change. You're trying to get them to disconnect from friends that they've known since childhood. You're trying to get this person to not go out, not drink, not party, not do whatever. Do you understand? Um, 
you have to work on that. You have to accept this person for who they are, okay? Um, or Cancer, for some of you, if you're dealing with a Sag, if this is a Sag that wants to reconcile with you, the Divine is telling you that, um, you know, to keep, stand your ground with this person and unless they make solid promises of commitment to not take them back. So that is a side note, Cancer. So this could be you stepping up to the plate, standing by your own rules, standing by your boundaries and telling this person, if you want to reconcile, then I want an engagement ring. We have to move in together. I want commitment. And unless you hear those words of commitment, don't take them back. So that's a side note. If we're dealing with a Capricorn, no, Sagittarius, Capricorn. Yeah. If we're dealing with a Capricorn, the Ace of Pentacles, the Ace of Cups, we've got the Three of Swords and we've got the Eight of Wands. Cancer, you're about to meet a new Capricorn. Okay. This is for my Cancers that either they're meeting, it's a new Capricorn. That's it. If, if you're looking for information about a past Capricorn, this is not where it's at. Some of you are meeting a new Capricorn. And as soon as you meet this person, you want to tell this person about every bad thing that's ever happened to you. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's too soon. I'm not saying that you shouldn't communicate to anybody, you know, what you've been through, but there's a time and place for everything. You know, after six months of being together, if you're sitting on the couch on a rainy night, you're both having a glass of wine, you can sit there and open up, okay? But we're talking, it's the first date. It's the first date that, you know, that God is gifting you with a beautiful, new, shiny, you know, situation here. Uh, God is putting out their hand and bringing you a beautiful new love offer. And instead of joy enjoying this date and this new love interest, all you want to do is talk about your exes and your past and how much you were hurt. Get a therapist. If you feel the need to talk about your pain, get a therapist. Talk to a friend call somebody. This is, this is a situation where you need to be focused on your person, okay? Because this person is trying to come in and offer you love. They're trying to offer you commitment. And the only thing that you're doing is not seeing them. The way the Capricorn is feeling here, Cancer, is you're not seeing them. They're trying to give you so much, but you're not living in the moment. This Capricorn may have gone above and beyond to wash their car, get their car cleaned, make reservations at a beautiful restaurant, restaurant. You're all dressed up nice for them. They're all dressed up nice for you. And instead of you staring lovingly into this Capricorn's eyes and appreciating the moment and saying how beautiful the restaurant is and thank you so much for taking the time out to do, you're telling them about what happened, yeah, you know, with your last relationship and how you're not doing it again. And I'm so heartbroken and shattered. And this Capricorn's like, okay. You know what I'm saying? You're not living in the moment. Don't do that because God is trying to give you a blessing here and you may end up pushing it away. Okay. So, so make sure cancer that before you start dating again, that you focus on those inner triggers and those inner wounds and learn to not bring past baggage into your relationships. It is okay to have these conversations, but there's a time and a place. Okay. If we're dealing with an Aquarius, we've got the five of swords. We've got the knight of cups. We have the six of swords and we've got the magician. Cancer, if you're dealing with an Aquarius, I feel that um, you're dealing with somebody that is uh, has two personalities. I don't know. This person may have a lot of Gemini in their chart, okay? You're dealing with someone that has two personalities. One minute, they make you feel like they're in love with you. They make you feel like, you know, uh, they make you feel like everything's going to be okay. And the next minute, you know, they just disappear. You know, the magician appears and disappears. The next minute, they may, you know, start a fight and walk out. Cancer... Again, this goes back to, you know, how are you going to deal with this? This goes back to you understanding that this is a trauma bond and that that's abusive. Okay. You come towards someone as a Knight of Cups energy. You're offering stability and romance and making them high on love and then taking it away. Okay. This is someone that's trying to manifest a trauma bond. So this is you needing to see the red flags in this situation and understanding that with the Six of Swords, this is too complicated for you. This is too much of an emotional roller coaster. This is a situation that is going to take your peace. It's going to take your prosperity. It's going to, uh, 
disrupt your life because it's like you think everything is okay. You have a beautiful night with this Aquarius. You wake up in the morning. You're talking to your friends with a smile ear to ear. Oh, they did this and it was so sweet and whatever. And then they don't call you for three days. Do you understand? And uh, you know, that is not, you, you, this is you needing to see the red flags that this person appears and disappears. They're like, you know what I'm saying? Um, and the question is, is that what you want for your life? I think not. I think not. So it is time to leave that negative situation and go find something better. So the way you're going to handle this spiritually, Cancer, is knowing your values, knowing you're taking back your self-love and your self-respect and removing yourself from the situation. That is going to show the Aquarius, you know, you don't need to yell. You don't need to scream. You don't even need to say anything. The next time they come back around as the Knight of Cups, just don't pick up the phone. Do you understand? And this Aquarius has two choices, Cancer, to understand that if they want to be the Nine of Cups, they need to be the Knight of Cups permanently. And if they want to be mind games and about the fuckery, they need to go do that somewhere else because it's not, you're not opening your door for that anymore. Okay. Very simple. The way people show you through actions, what the connection really is, you need to show through actions also. Words only mean so much, okay? You can talk to this Aquarius for two hours straight, forgive them, take them back the day after they've hurt you, and all they heard was a bunch of words. Your actions show that you don't respect yourself. Your actions show, so so before you speak cancer, you need to act. And what you need to do here, as you can see, there's no communication in these cards. You need to just shut your door. The next time they come back around, you need to keep it closed. And then when this person says, hey, why aren't you picking up the phone? Then you can say, listen, I just want to explain to you that I am not a toy. You can't pick me up and put me down when you want. If you want to be the Knight of Cups, be the Knight of Cups. If you want to be about the, the fuckery, you need to take that somewhere else. So you can go ahead and decide. I really like you. I really like you. I would like to pursue this, but I'm not a toy. And you're not going to treat me as a toy. And now you see, Cancer, the Aquarius is going to listen because you've already shown them through actions that you're not playing with them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Whereas if the next time this person, this Aquarius comes around with the Knight of Cups, if you say, listen, I I'm, I'm going to meet you tonight. I'm going to get dressed up. We're going to go out and I need to talk to you. Okay. And you just tell them how you feel about everything. And that night you end up having sex, you eat. And the next day they do it again. That's why, because you're just using words. People don't listen to words. They understand actions. Okay. If you're dealing with a Pisces, we've got the Tower, we've got the King of Pentacles, we have the Ten of Swords, and we've got the Knight of Wands. So Cancer, if you're dealing with a Pisces, this is somebody that at one point was extremely loyal and committed and grounded to you. Okay. What's going to happen here is this is somebody that is going to completely switch up on you. This is somebody that is going to want to end a situation. They're going to want to go off on their own, pursue their own things. It's going to be a complete shock to you because it's like this person just wakes up one day and they're a completely different person. It is going to hurt like hell. I'm not going to lie to you. It is going to hurt like hell. It's going to feel like a massive betrayal. But again, the way you're going to handle this spiritually cancer is to understand that there has been a problem all along. This may have happened, Cancer, because you may have, you know, told this Pisces that you want commitment, you want this, you want that. You may have attempted to change this Pisces in some way. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, this Pisces came forward, gave you whatever they wanted, but that's not really who they were. And that's why this tower fell, because this was built on a, on a, a, a very broken foundation. It was built on a foundation where this person was doing everything they could to please you so you wouldn't yell or scream or leave them okay and now their true self is coming out and now you have spent six months a year or a few years building a life with this person and it's going to come crumbling down why because quite possibly you made an attempt to change this person or something along those lines um or it could be that this person was lying all along for for whatever reason okay but that how you're going to handle this spiritually cancer is to understand the reason why this is happening is because you were building a life with somebody where there was stuff that you weren't 
everyone's seeing. And God has a, a bird's eye view cancer. God sees what this person was doing behind your back. And that is why this fell. Now, you've learned the lessons here, Cancer. So now you can take those lessons and go to your next relationship and rebuild on a smarter plane, okay? Rebuild on a smarter plane. I feel like this is somebody that, because the King of Pentacles doesn't just wake up one day and turn into the Knight of Wands. I feel like you met this Pisces in Knight of Wands mode. And what you did was you took out your chisel and your hammer and you and you tried to build them up to be a King of Pentacles. And after a period of time, this person couldn't take the pressure anymore and went back to being a Knight of Wands. And now you're sitting there shocked. Stop viewing people as projects. They're not, this Knight of Wands energy is not your project to fix. They're not. Do you understand that this Knight of Wands energy has to go through their own growth process. And when they're ready to step into the shoes of the King of Pentacles, that's when they will be the King of Pentacles. And that's why this tower fell. Okay. That is why this tower fell. All right, you're you're trying to create and build. You know, you're trying to play build a bitch here, or build a build a guy here, build build a husband, build a wife. Okay, no, you know this person is. They came to you a certain way, and you wanted this person to grow up way faster than they needed to, and that is why this is falling apart. And it may seem like a betrayal to you, but the lesson you need to take from this is that the next person that you meet, if they are a project, if you have to raise them, if you have to teach them, if you have to build them up, it's going to fall apart because it's not your job to raise anyone's child. It's not your job to take someone off the streets and tell them how to live their life. It's not your job. It's not your job. That person is where they are in their life because that's where they want to be. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's where they want to be. And everything is falling apart for this reason. So the lesson you need to take from this is no more build a, no more build a bitch relationships, no more projects. Okay. If you're not meeting a king, king of pentacles as is, then leave it alone. Or if you're meeting a knight of wands, accept that they are a knight of wands and that's it. Okay. All right, my loves, I hope you enjoyed. I love you so very much and I will see you guys soon. Take care, my darlings.